Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today I will be showing you how to use Photopia and we'll be using the drop shadow tool and I will show you how to make a object look 3D rather than 2D in a pattern. So first off, obviously you'll want to open Photopia in Google and you're just going to click on the new project. So it'll open up a box like this and you just want to make sure that it's on the print setting. Once it's on the print setting, select the A4 size paper or whichever paper size that you desire. Once that's been selected, just click create and this white blank page will pop up here. So the, the techniques that we will be looking at are really good in terms of looking at artists like Bobby Doherty or Emily Blinker. So we're going to start off first by clicking on our layer. So our layer is on the right hand side where it says background and it shows our little white page. We're just going to click on the padlock to unlock the layer. This allows us to alter and edit the layer as we wish. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure our background is coloured. So if we go to the tools menu on the left hand side, we're going to look for the paint bucket tool. Now if you hover over your tools, it tells you which tools are which. Now in the corner of the boxes, there'll be a little white arrow. That means that there's other tools inside of the tools. So we're just gonna hover over, right click, and it shows us the other tools. So usually when you open Photopia, it's the gradient tool that'll pop up. But we're just gonna hover over, right click, and select the paint bucket tool. So once we've done that, that tool allows us then to color to add block color to our paper. So to make sure we want the, we've got the right colour that we want, at the bottom of the toolbox, there's two different coloured boxes. So we're going to select the top box. This opens the colour picker for us. So I've selected this really nice blue kind of colour. But you can alter this by changing and dragging the white line on the colour picker. Or you can even move the white circle if you wanted to. So once you're happy with your colour, all you need to do is click OK and then click on your page. So there we go, there's our colour. What we're then going to do is we need to find an object that we want to add into this page. So we're just going to go File, Open and what I've done is I've already found an image that I like. So I'm just going to select that and it's going to open a new document for me. So you can see my blank paper is still there. Um, my second object is here. So now to select this, I only want the lemon out of the image. So to do that, all I'm going to do is go right over to the toolbar section again. And I'm going to be looking for the um, quick selection tool. So if I've hovered over that, you can see that that one there is the quick selection. Again, if you're having trouble finding it, just right click and you can usually find it in the drop down section. So quick selection tool. Once I've done that, I can see that there's a little cursor on my screen. So I'm just going to click once and you can see it's automatically picked up my lemon shape. Once that's happened, we're going to go to select an inverse. What this will do is this selects everything else apart from the lemon. Now this is a good way to quickly delete everything else apart from the subject that you want to keep. So once everything is selected and inversed, we're literally just going to press the delete button and we are left with our lemon shape. Now to get rid of our running ants, we're just going to go to select again and deselect. So now we're left with our, our lemon shape. Now once this has been done correctly, we can then literally keep hold of our cursor and drag it to the first document. And there it is. So obviously, as you can see, it's created a completely new layer on the right hand side of the screen. We've got the background and we've got the top layer, which is our object. So it's a little bit small. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to edit, transform and scale. Now, remember to hold the shift key down when you're editing this image because it won't scale proportionally if you let go of, if you let go of the shift key. So once we're happy, with the scale. That's it, that's our object. So we click enter and that's our object place. Now, the only problem we have here is our object looks a little bit flat. 
So to help it look 3D and to help it stand out a little bit, we need to add a drop shadow. So to do this, you're just going to make sure that your selection is still on your object and you're going to right click over your layer. You'll then open this drop down box. So we're going to go to blending options right at the top. Click that and this box will open. And right at the bottom of this list, you have drop shadow. Now you can see instantly there's a shadow that's appeared onto the lemon. Now this is where we can really play around with it. So where it says angle and there's a circle, we can actually drag and move our shadow around. So as I'm moving that around, you can see the shadow moving on the lemon. It's up to you where you place your shadow. So I'm just going to place it above my lemon because it looks like the bottom of the lemon is sat then on the background, if that makes sense. We're then going to alter the distance. So the further I, the more I move my distance up, the further the shadow gets away, and the lower I move my distance, the closer the, uh, the closer the shadow goes to the object. So we're just going to put it around there. So around 60. Then we can alter the spread. So sometimes this can alter the shadow going all the way around your object. And we're going to change the size. So you can see that the shadow is flared all the way around because it's bigger. But we're going to keep it nice and neat, nice and small, and keep it at the bottom. You can also change the opacity. So obviously opacity just changes the transparency. So the further down we move our opacity, we can't see it at all. But if we move it right up, it becomes really dark. So we're just going to go about 60-ish. That seems to work really nicely. So that's our drop shadow. So just click OK and that's it done. Now you can move your object around and your drop shadow will follow your object. So it's safe. So once you've done that, a really easy way to repeat this object, if we go back to that layer and we can see it's still selected, if you right click it again, the same drop box opens, blending options at the top. If we go down a bit, there's an option here that says duplicate layer. So if we just click on that, you can see that it's made a copy in the layers, layers section and we can actually drag and drop. So if we right click again on that layer, duplicate layer, we can move and again, duplicate layer and move again. So we've created a nice little picture. Now that is the drop shadow for you. So make sure when you've finished, you've saved your images. So just go to File, Export as JPEG. Remember, we use the JPEG file just because it's the one that works best with all formats. So just save that there and we can see it's now been saved. So if I just click that to open, there's my image already and saved. Okay, so thank you very much for watching.